Today, I've got a really cool update from Korea. Real-time image generation with consistency. Yeah, this is a pretty big step for fast and creative AI image generation. Plus, I've got a look at an open source model that is a pretty interesting step towards, you know, the whole like prompt to movie thing. All right, it was leg day. I don't feel like standing here all day. Let's get going. So Kriya, who I do think most of you know, but just in case you don't, is sort of an all-in-one uh, AI generation platform. You can, of course, create AI imagery in Flux. Uh, I think they pretty much have like every video model available uh, on the platform. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at the real-time AI image generator. So the real-time model has been around for a while. I'm sure that most of you have played with it at one point or another. Uh, it's the thing where you know you can uh, put in a text prompt. So let's do, in honor of Nosferatu, uh, let's put in a close-up of a vampire. We can begin painting and you know obviously the model will then update um, as we go along. I've always had a lot of fun with it. It's just a really kind of cool and neat way to explore ideas, uh, you know, just kind of play around. The problem, of course, as you can tell here, is the fact that every time we make any kind of change whatsoever, um, you know, the model then reacts and everything changes. That said, I've always found this to be a really fun tool just to kind of play around with, uh, make some, you know, scribbly shapes and see what comes out. The other interesting thing that we can do here is, you know, swap out our models just to see how things look uh, in a cartoon model, uh, CGI style, concept art style, photorealistic, um, HD, and the flux model. Um, oh, flux, you got pretty abstract there. When you do end up running across something that you like, one trick is just to drag your image from one canvas to another. And then uh, obviously it, again, auto updates. So uh, you don't get a one-to-one -one of what you previously had, but you get a restylization. But again, the problem is that anytime that we make, you know, any kind of move whatsoever, uh, the entire uh, canvas ends up changing. And again, this does get to be problematic when we're dealing with characters as like, you know, the slightest sort of change or move alters the character entirely. So Korea has actually solved this by allowing you to train up a model uh, and then use it in the real-time module. Uh, so obviously to do so, you just upload three or more images of the same style face or object. Luckily for me, I have a whole folder of photos of me pointing at nothing and making shocked faces. So an important note to use this for real-time, you'll wanna come down to the little gear button here uh, and just make sure that this tab is turned on to real time. I think, I believe it, it defaults to flux. So just make sure you have it on real time. Uh, and then obviously you're gonna wanna use the character preset. Uh, from there, it, it really is just, just hit train AI and off it goes. So I'd say it took about 15 minutes uh, to generate this up. And from here, uh, we can just hit the use with real time. This of course will bring us back over to our real time canvas. As you can see, it's already gotten started and actually being fairly kind to me as well. So thank you, Korea. Uh, and our style, is loaded here. So, uh, you know, from here we can just begin prompting. So let's just say uh, a man in a black t-shirt. So obviously it will begin generating something up. But again, the real fun of it is, you know, coming into uh, the paintbrush and kind of starting to manipulate and play around with things from here. But um, even then we are still you know, very, very far from being done. And obviously the better that you are drawing, the more that you're probably going to end up getting out of this part of it. So uh, if your drawing skills aren't quite up to speed, well, this is where things get crazy. So one of the things that I did not get a chance to cover the other day is the fact that uh, you can now import in images into Korea and then turn them into 3D objects. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So we have this image of a jet fighter here. Uh, obviously the real-time model is going crazy because we have no prompt here. So it's just kind of making up uh, whatever it, it thinks it wants to make up with this image. Um, so what we can do here is just, if you right click on this, uh, we're gonna remove the background. And now what we can do is we can right click on this once again and convert it into a 3D object. Yeah, this is pretty crazy. And now we have a jet fighter right here. So uh, we're probably gonna wanna delete our previous version here. Uh, and then now, we can you know begin prompting and now obviously as we begin rotating and moving our model around uh the real-time generator will end up you know creating images based off of that as well uh and you know from here it gets of course super fun because we do have access somewhat at least uh to layers so we can generate an image here and let's just put um photorealistic city street if we expand this out a little bit and then once again right click we can send this backward uh, and we now have our plane obviously in front of our city street 
So yeah, pretty cool. Now I will note that, you know, obviously as we change our plane here, again, we run into the issue where the plane keeps changing. Um, isn't consistent and uh, you know, honestly, there are definitely some angles at which it goes a little bit nuts. Um, well, that is where we circle back to our training data. So once again, reloading in the trained version of me, uh, we're just gonna drop in uh, just an image of me. We now have a version of me just kind of hanging out in a white void. Um, but again, what we can do is right click on the actual photo of me and convert me into 3D. Uh, things do get weird here. I mean, that is rough. Um, but if you notice on the uh, you know output side, again, because it is running through my train data, um, it does, um, it doesn't, you know, it's not a hundred percent me, but it's, it's pretty close. So once again, we can generate another background here. Uh, let's just go ahead and let's randomize this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just grab this prompt here and add it to the back end of my initial prompt. Uh, we will again, move this to the background. And with that, I've got kind of a, you know, Instagram worthy photo of me standing in a field of sunflowers. Um, again, we can drag this back over and reinforce the me in here. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now, if you're looking for more precise control over, well, your, your, your blobby mess, uh, what I would recommend doing is turning the AI strength slider down. Uh, so here we have it, I, I mean, I'm guesstimating here at about 75%. Um, if we crank this, oh, 73%. If we crank this up, you'll notice that you know um the background becomes more details it definitely takes more liberties uh with the placement of blobby me uh but again if you take it back down to like uh 75 73 percent it definitely looks more in line with where i'm placing um this 3d model so aside from weird portraits on alien planets what else can we do with this well, I wanted to see how it would handle like, 3D characters, considering that, you know, when you do that convert to 3D thing, I mean, it always looks horrific with real people, but it tends to do an okay job with uh, 3D animated type characters. So I generated up a character sheet of, you know, kind of a Laura Croft-esque character uh, in Mid Journey. From there, I ended up taking this image and bringing it into Photoshop and then just slicing out individual uh, character shots and then bringing that back over to Korea. And then I actually just added in uh, a number of the generations as well, just the full body turnarounds to see what would happen. Um, as we can see, we were you know good-ish on the number of images and the average resolution was okay. Um, so let's train this up and see what happens. So yeah, kicking off with the prompt jungle adventurer, as you can see, uh, Korea's already gotten excited about the whole thing and started generating up an image. Now the plus side here is that since we already have a full bodied shot of our character, we can bring her in and uh, once again, uh, convert her into a 3D layer. While the 3D model is not the greatest, uh, it definitely does serve its purpose. So uh, let's go ahead and create a background again. And yeah, there you go. That is actually not bad. Uh, now, of course, there are still some like pose control issues, like she is raising her arm here. Uh, our model clearly is not. I do hope that we will at some point or another get at least semi-rigged characters um, that we can have more pose control with. And to note that as we do sort of move the model around a little bit, it does have the tendency to kind of like morph and shift a little bit. Definitely not as much as we saw without the trained models, but it is definitely good enough to get into a point of being able to more or less control your shots. Like if you do want the butt shot, you can get the butt shot. Want a cool mysterious pyramid in the background? Just add one in, remove the background, and yeah, we now have you know a mysterious pyramid in the background. Uh, do just make sure to update your prompt. That is one thing I have definitely noticed. Um, when you add elements in, you're definitely gonna wanna call them out in the prompt. Ultimately, when you land on something that you really wanna save, um, you can just hit the save button here, or you can hit the upscale button. So overall, is it perfect? No, it's not, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction. And to note, like bootleg Laura Croft here was not trained with very much material. I think that if we could, you know, double the amount of training material that we gave to Korea, I, I think we'd have much better results. And again, really my only other quibble with this is the fact that, you know, we don't have any kind of pose control or character rigging in here. Um, you know, we've definitely seen a lot of these 2D to 3D models popping up, but nothing that, you know, has any kind of like auto rigged character in it. 
Now, I will admit that when we do get pose control, it's going to open up the door to a whole set of new problems, but those are going to be good problems to have. Interestingly, some of the concepts that we're seeing here actually bridge us into our next story, uh, kind of you know, the first real step into prompt to movie. Uh, but first, you know, one thing I've been working on for you all is a website to serve as a resource for all of the tools that we talk about on the channel, sort of serving as a home base for the channel. And I think it's fair to say that if you're watching this channel, you've probably generated a fair amount of material that, you know, you could use a home base for as well. So I've been building mine with Hostinger, which has everything you need to grow online. And after spending some time with it, this one definitely gets my recommendation. If you head over to hostinger.com backslash theoretically, link is obviously down below, you'll then have the choice for two different plans. I do highly recommend the business website builder. Uh, it's $3.49 for 48 months. It's really, it's only a dollar more than the other one. And you get access to all of the AI tools, which I, you know, I don't need to tell you, that's the cool stuff. On top of that pretty deep sale price, when you're in the checkout page, you can click on uh, have a coupon code and enter my code theoretically for an additional 10% off. So once you're in, let's take a look at how easy it is to set everything up. Uh, from your dashboard, you just come over to websites. And just for fun, let's just create an entirely new website. So I'm gonna hit add website. From here, you have options to either build in WordPress, the hosting or website builder, of course, and just straight up, you know, empty HTML, PHP. Uh, I really do like the hosting or website builder. So for our example, we'll set up Rocket Fuel Coffee Shop. It's a coffee shop that specializes in serving coffee drinks with the highest level of caffeine legally allowed. I do love my coffee. Interestingly as well, you can actually just add an online store with a simple click as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this website. And in just a few moments, we have you know kind of a working prototype for our new website. Uh, you can choose different color palettes here. To be honest, actually, they kind of nailed it that first go around. So I'm just gonna hit continue. And from here, we can begin customizing and editing our website however we like. And again, it's super easy to swap any of these images out. You just hit generate image. Uh, although I really do like this image, but we'll just try it out. And indeed, we end up with a different image. Although I do have to admit, I think hosting or kind of nailed it the first time around. All of our AI tools are set up in this section. As we saw, we have an AI image generator. We have an AI writer, page generator, section generator, blog generator, and more. Uh, let's try out the AI logo maker here. And since we are rocket fuel coffee, let's try a coffee cup with a rocket ship theme. Try this out. And in just a few moments, we have four options to choose from. I do like number three a lot. Now, obviously we would want to tweak a little bit more before we send rocket fuel coffee online. Uh, but just as a note, you can also set up an entire e-commerce store here as well with no additional transaction fees. So if you've been on the fence about building a website for your business, for your portfolio, or just your AI experiments, this is a really great deal. I mean, Hostinger handles everything from obviously your hosting to SSL certificates. Head over to hostinger.com backslash theoretically. Once again, the link is down in the description. And don't forget to add theoretically at checkout for an additional 10% off. My thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring today's video. Moving on, we've got a pretty interesting step towards you know that whole like prompt to movie thing. To note, while I'm not a a huge fan of the idea of you know automating every aspect of the process i do recognize that this is all part of the process that you know will create more tools for creators to use so this is film agent a multi-agent framework for end-to-end -end film automation in 3d virtual spaces now admittedly you're going to have to use your imagination a bit uh considering that the output yeah it looks a little bit on like the roblox side or if you're old enough uh the dire straits money for nothing music video so film agent is actually agent based um, so it's a number of llms that are all working together taking on the roles of director screenwriter actors and cinematographers uh it also takes 10 percent of the money that you make because it's the one that got you the job. Now, I know that the video output definitely looks a little rudimentary. We're going to talk about why that is and actually an interesting experiment on making it look better in just a minute. But the overall idea of how Film Agent works is actually sort of fascinating. So obviously we begin with a prompt and actually a 3D virtual space that then is handed over to the director uh, who then assigns out character profiles for that scene uh, along with planning out how the scene should flow. 
From there, the director's output is then taken over to the screenwriter agent who writes uh, you know, a screenplay. But here's where things get interesting because the screenwriter's draft then has to be critiqued not only by the director, but also by the actors. I'm telling you, the screenwriter module definitely has the worst job and is probably super neurotic. So the director module obviously goes through and gives notes on performance while the AI actors, uh, you know, I mean, like ask the age old question, what's my motivation here? Once everyone's happy, except the screenwriter, presumably, uh, we then have a final script that is then handed off to the cinematography module. That agent then decides how these scripts should be broken up in terms of medium shots, zoom shots, long shots, etc. From there, all of that information is taken over to Unity, uh, the game engine, which I guess handles actual production. So the fact that the team went in this kind of like Robloxian direction for this demo uh, doesn't mean that this is all it would necessarily be capable of, considering that, you know, you can get a lot of different looks out of Unity. The trick, of course, being that you would still have to build every location and prop in Unity. Uh, and not only that, but you would have to obviously let the model know what each of those props are. So as it stands, we are still definitely not at the like prompt Titanic, but a Xenomorph on board. But the idea that the team was aiming for behind this was to have kind of more consistent and coherent storytelling uh, as opposed to say something like Sora, which is capable of generating, you know, uh, kind of the scene that we prompt, but it tends to be a little bit random in terms of its storytelling. So the idea of multiple agents with different jobs essentially debating each other uh, tends to probably lead to a more collaborative output. Of course, the fact that they brought up Sora got me thinking like, what would it look like if we ran kind of that game engine Unity footage through Sora's remix function? And well, here's the original and here is our Sora remix. 100% still wonky and weird, but I mean, it's it's kind of getting there. The link to Film Agent is down below. Again, it is open source, but again, you also need to know Unity. But if you're interested, please do give it a shot. Let us know how it goes. Finally, breaking just as I'm finishing this video up, uh, Pika have just announced their 2.1 model. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, yeah, really excited to check this out. Hopefully we'll have a look at it sometime next week. Uh, overall, yeah, I uh, love the fact that every but he's moving into these next gen models now. Finally, if you've made it this far into the video, I presume you are subscribed. You're definitely gonna wanna have that bell notification on too. I've got something pretty big coming down the pike next week. Uh, in the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.